Hello, Maddie. Hi. How's it going? Uh, it's good. It's good. I so you get to have the experience of the lady saying "recording in progress." I'm never gonna get yeah. over that. I think it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> So um, here we are. I am Megan Holmes. For those people who have just clicked onto this YouTube station or you're on an audio podcast and you've not joined us before, I'm Megan and I am one half of the Pointing It Out podcast team uh, together with my friend Melissa McLeod, who owns the Wool and the Floss uh, shop up in Gross Point, Michigan, um, and I own the Needlepoint Clubhouse here in St. Louis, Missouri. Together, we started this podcast just outside of, of the beginning of sort of the, the shutdown of COVID. So believe it or not, we've been doing this for four years, which is wild to me. Since then, my life has changed a little bit, and I can say that not only do I own the Needlepoint Clubhouse, but I also own the Gingham Stitchery which is a wholesale distributor in our industry. And I was just telling this one over here who I'll let introduce um, herself in just a second. I was just saying to her, I was sitting at my desk trying to determine my next sort of interviews for the podcast. And I thought to myself, wait a second, there are several women that I represent like right here in this building and I haven't talked to them yet. So would you please go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah. So uh, my name is Maddie Sweet. Sweet is truly my last name. I know it's weird and funky and cool, but <laughs> it's darling and amazing. Go yeah. Ahead. <laughs> um, thank you. So Maddie Sweet, and I am one of the, what is it now? Five, six of us at Kingdom Stitchery. You're going to put me on the spot. I should know. I know. I'm sorry. I should have had it. But... <laughs> no, no, no. That's okay. So the gang over at are... Kingdom Stitchery. Yep. So the Kingdom um... Stitchery crew. Absolutely. Yeah. And so you go by the, um, I guess like call sign, if you will, Sweet. Uh, that's what yes. you'll see on our on the canvases uh, mm -hmm. right here, and um, like you said, what an awesome last name! And so, so do you call it Maddie Sweet Designs, or do you call it Sweet Designs, yeah. or do you? How do you like to call that? Yeah, Maddie Sweet Designs. It's funny because growing up, like even still now, everybody full names me all the time. So it's Maddie yeah. Sweet. It's not just like Maddie, Got but you. it's it's sweet so fun. So it's just it it's fun. perfect. It's perfect. And we'll get here um, in a minute to one of your most popular designs, which is also like so fitting for the name. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start um, at the beginning. So I'll give just a teensy tiny little bit of, of, of the background from the Gingham Stitchery. So the Gingham Stitchery started, gosh, was it, has it been two years now? I'm trying yeah, to think. Probably. I think it was two years July-ish when we launched the mm -hmm. um, sort of parent company, if you will, the Gingham Citry Distributorship. And um, I think it was Kate Woodward was first, was sort of our first um, licensed designer. And so, um, and then shortly after that, a, a couple others of you kind of jumped on board. And I think maybe Maddie, were you the second or third? Do you remember how that went? Um, I think Angie Kirkland was first. And then me and Abby Squirrel and Snail were like the same time. -ish. About the same time. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, we, I had an intention of starting a wholesale distributorship, but I had no real plan for it. So um, Kate Woodward sort of fell in my lap. Her mother um, actually is an employee of ours here at the Needlepoint Clubhouse now. And then um, happened upon Maddie, or was it your sister who was here in the shop? Help me yeah, with that. So Tegan, yeah, so my sister Tegan and my mom, um, they always love to do like Needlepoint road trips. And my sister was at Notre Dame. So okay. they- drove down, I think it's like four hour drive, five hour drive from Notre Makes Dame. Sense. Yeah, she's getting her PhD, it's done now, which is great. But um, so they drove down one weekend when my mom was visiting, it was like a school break or something. Uh -huh. And um, they came to visit. And at that point I was like doing a little design stuff, mostly for mom and Tegan, just cause they were like, oh, we're, can you paint this? Or can you paint that? And I was like, sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Christmas present, mm -hmm. easy, done. Mm -hmm. um, but they came down and Tegan's very like, there's no harm in asking there's no harm in showing there's no harm in chatting where I'm like I don't know is that annoying like, and she's like I'm just gonna show them if they say no that's fine and I was like true smart yeah. so I think she showed Lauren and you came over later like when she saw a couple things uh -huh. and they were like oh we really like it I was like oh my god so Tegan was like yeah yeah, yeah. They, they want you to email obviously and chat with them and see you know how this goes but um yeah so they were like showing me off basically, um, right. which was really fun and really nice. So yeah. So that's kind of how that got started. And yeah. um, so I want to, I want to back up because I, it, 
more happened right after the story that you just told, like it kind of mm -hmm. got exciting and I'll tell you why here in a minute, but let's back up for just a second. So you're, you have a sister and I also think yes. it's cute that it's like the sweet sisters. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and your mother also stitches. So did you all start, did you and your sister start stitching when you were like, when you were kids or did your mom teach you or sort of st start us back at that beginning? Sure. Yeah. So my mom's been stitching forever. I think since high school, forever. Every memory is her like bringing something in the car or like I had swim meets and I have two older brothers and a younger sister. So a lot of games and sporting events and things. Um, so she would always have something in her bag, in her car, whatever. And Tegan and I didn't totally gravitate towards it at first, just because it was like kind of mom's thing. Mm -hmm. um, and not to say that like we didn't want to try it or anything. We just I, I took up knitting, so I have other, you know, and painting and whatever. And then Tegan likes photography and she's a science kind of gal. So we just kind of had our own little fields. Um, and then around the pandemic, which I know is very, very common for a lot of people, um, mm -hmm. mom was stitching and just, you know, stitching up a storm. And um, we're both teachers. Mom and I are both art teachers. So we were both like kind of off for a little bit. Um, still working, still on Zoom, which is like kind of crazy that... I'm back on Zoom. Um, For sure. <laughs> yeah, it's just a weird feeling because I'm not uh -huh. like, all right, kids, like, hello. Yes. <laughs> so um, I started stitching and then painting mostly too. Um, and then Tegan during her doctorate program, obviously it's, you know, it's high stress and cool, but just a lot. So she needed some sort of stress relief. So she was stitching as well. So mom was like in her heaven of all of us all stitching at once. So yeah, so it's kind of how it like started. Yeah. And so you mentioned that your sister was at uh, Notre Dame doing her, yep. did you say PhD? I can't remember. PhD, now. It was yeah. Okay. Um, chemistry. Yep. Got it. And so, but you grew up where? Um, so we're about an hour south of Boston. Um, so I'm just a suburb on the commuter rail line. Got it. And so- In Massachusetts. Got you. Got you. And so you, that's where you're coming uh, to us from is, is uh, right. outside of Boston. And mm -hmm. so you grew up there and you're uh, also teaching still at the same yeah. high school high you went school. to, yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah. It's a I weird feeling that. for sure. <laughs> I bet. I bet. And so um, you are the artist. And did you, when you just referred, are there four kids or five kids in your family? Four. Four. So, so two so, brothers, me, I'm the third, and then Tegan. And got you. So you're the artsy yeah. sister. Your mm -hmm. sister is the science scientist sister. Right. And so did, where did you go to, um, where did you go to undergrad or did, tell me, tell yeah. me about your higher education. Totally. So, um, I went to mass art in Boston, um, Massachusetts college of art and design, and it's the only public art school in the country. So it wow. is a state school. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, so state tuition for the level of, you know, RISD kind of academia. Um, it was an amazing experience. Love it so much. I know everybody's like, oh, I want to go back to college. But it's yes. like, I painted every day in college for homework. Oh and all of my friends were painting and we were all just hanging out painting. And it was just really cool. <laughs> yeah. So so was your, um, uh, how do I say this? Medium of choice was yeah, focus. acrylic yeah, was, or oils or is it just painting or how? Um, I was illustration. So I kind of dabbled in everything. Um, so you could do, you could like specialize in painting as a major ceramics, illustration, graphic design, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So for illustration, I did a lot of, um, color pencil. I love watercolor. Acrylic wasn't totally my jam just because it doesn't blend as well as other things. Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously with needlepoint painting, it's all acrylic basically. So, um, right. we got there, but <laughs> yeah. right. Right. So then that kind of leads me to sort of the next sort of question that's natural in this particular, uh, I guess, area of your life. So you're a painter. So mm -hmm. now we know you're designing. Do you illustrate your designs first? Do you paint your designs? Do you use a, oh shoot, I'm not on do not disturb. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. Do you, um, you know, how do you translate what's in your brain to a needlepoint canvas? Totally. Yeah. So um, we learned pretty heavily to sketch first um, in college, we always had sketchbooks. Everybody was drilling that into our brains. Um, so it's a good practice. It's a nice habit to get into. So I sketch everything out pretty much a couple times. Like the first iteration is normally just like chicken scratch. Mm -hmm. This might not work or whatever. Um, and then I will actually bring it into the computer. So I'm pretty good with Photoshop, pretty good with like Illustrator, all the Adobe things. So when I found out Mac Stitch was a program to use, 
Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely gravitated towards that. And it just was kind of second nature after everything I did in um, college. So it's kind of an easy transition. Max Stitch is definitely a little bit finicky just yeah. because everything's gridded, obviously, with mm-hmm. the nature of stitching. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit of an adjustment, but for the most part, it was a pretty smooth transition, just another program to learn, you know? That's very cool. And so um, for some of our designers, I just think this is an interesting little piece of information that people may not know. So some of the designers in the Gang of Stitchery uh, Collective send actual painted versions of their piece as a master to to have them then reproduce. And some send electronic versions. And so am I right that you send us the electronic file? Yeah, yeah, I do. I will still paint things, um, but I'm definitely more just, I like undo. I like erase. I like to, you know, (laughs) so much easier. And again, it was just something I was so used to in college. So it's just a a practice, a routine that I just kind of got into and it's kind of flowed from there. So I love it. Yeah. So now I'm going to switch back over to the story you were telling earlier, which is your, your mother and your sister were here in the store and saying, oh, my sister's a a designer. And so, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. That happens Oh, every day but yeah often like oh look what I did and look you know and we're like oh right. yay, yay you but rarely are we like yay let's rep you you know because we're trying to put together totally. a group of artists who have their own perspective and that mm-hmm. one isn't going to cannibalize the other and so we're you know it's it's a little more of a um a process for us than just to say jump on board guys so yeah. um so you know we're like oh that's really good and and you know they were good but then um then it was, hey, I'm going to have my sister, Well, because first of all, I'm the type of personality too. You never know if you don't ask, right? You never know. Right. So yeah. I always encourage people like throw your hat in the ring, ask, put it out there, happy to help, you know, when I can. But um, so then we said, we'll have her send because, you know, we, we need a body of work. We can't just have like one or two designs, you know? Right. So I almost lost my mind when we got your files. Number one, they were all very good. But number two, it was as if you were in my brain, because I don't know if you remember this. But I had been wanting to do birthday crowns. Do you remember this? No. So I had been saying to Lauren, I think we should do birthday crowns. Like, were they like, you know, you tie them with a ribbon? And I like, right. I didn't really have design ideas in mind. We had done the numbers, like the the can the wax yes. numbers. And I was like, wouldn't it be cute to make a crown then and like change the number for the thing? And ta-da, Maddie Sweet's collection, it had multiple darling different birthday crowns and I was like this this is just too weird <laughs> this yeah. is just too <laughs> awesome so that was sort of the first like all right the stars are aligning like this is making sense and then <clears throat> you know as we continued to like look at your body of work there was a lot there and that's also an important piece of of being a designer particularly in, part, in our in our gingham stitchery world because we want to make sure you have a body of work that we can actually you know, promote that it's not just a couple here yeah, and there. Of course. Um, and mm-hmm. so, so I, I, I had thought I'd told you that story that I had been wanting birthday crowns. So, so part of Maddie's line ha- has, I mean, how many are there? We have, I think, five different ones here in the shop, but there's at least there's eight. I was going to say there's got to be almost 10 because there's eight. the monsters and the yeah. princess and the crown. And so, anyway, yeah. love those. I, um, mm-hmm. and we, we, uh, they're doing really well. So, bravo. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and I'm trying to remember what else was in that first round of, of designs, but was this one of them? Sorry, I should have a. That, um, I don't know if it was actually, and then I've been thinking it was early. It was very early, but I don't know if it was in the first batch. So it's funny because when Lauren and I take a look at designs and, and for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm not super hands-on with the gang of stitchery. Lauren does a great job. And when I say Lauren, I mean, uh, Lauren DeVue, who's, um, she manages the Gang of Stitchery and is also a shop girl here in the shop, um, Sequin Lala, for those of you who are on Instagram. But so the first part, Lauren just kind of goes about and like works with the artist directly. And I just kind of, you know, I like eavesdrop sometimes because I want to know and she'll ask me advice on um, quantities and things like that. But for the most right. part, she just kind of goes about. And so it's funny because Lauren and I both have different, um, well, everybody has a different taste and different things they want to stick Oh, totally. With whatever. Yeah. So sometimes Absolutely. I'll be like, Oh my God, we need to order a million of those. Cause they're going to sell. And then she'll say, no, I don't think that's going to sell at all. And I think we should order a million. Well, this was the hot topic. I remember at one point, because yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, I mean, they're just animal crackers. Like I like animal crackers, but I like the regular old animal. She's like, no, the right. iced animal crackers are where it's at. Yeah. And I was so wrong. I was so wrong because this has been such a hot seller and all the iterations. Mm-hmm. So, um, can you tell me like, 
did you have inspiration for that? Like, do you like these crackers? Did you just think they were cute? Like, what was your... So, yeah, I, um, I don't know why, but I, so I, the way that I kind of work is I have like days where I'm like really creatively like there and like doing a bunch of sketches and it's like really great. And other days it's just, you know, you sit there, nothing comes to you and nothing happens. So whenever I have days where I'm like really going, I'll just lean into it. So um, I actually have some sketchbook pages where I was just like, drawn a ton of things I was like maybe could work I don't know and like a lot of times in that phase I would like send something to Laura and be like anything here and sometimes she's like I don't see this one but maybe this one or like this one I don't get where you're going because it's just so messy so uh -huh. <laughs> I'd have to like do it further so the whole point of this is that I drew it like really teeny like kind of an afterthought um little animal crackers and I was actually chatting with my boyfriend and I was like I don't know. I feel like this could be really cute. And he was like, what even are those? And I was like, you have never had animal crackers? Yeah. I was like, what? And he was like, no, I've had the regular kind, like you Same. said, but not the frosted kind. And I was like, oh my God, they're so, so much more fun. So I agree with Lauren that just like visually the frosted ones are like, and you know, the sprinkles, it's cute. So I, totally. I did a quick little like mock-up of it and I sent it to Lauren and Lauren was like, um, I'm dead. And I was like, oh, yay. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, so. and so this sweet little number here is uh, the 13 count mesh round. We have an 18 count mesh round. It's there's a clutch slash pillow yeah. size. Um, mm -hmm. Is that it? I think we've I can't That's remember it if we have other... for now. Oh, sneaky, yeah. sneaky. Okay. Okay. But anyway, this has been a really hot seller of yours. And I like I said earlier, I alluded. Sorry, I shouldn't have this like price tag stuff on here. <laughs> but I just grabbed it off the wall. Um, yeah. But the um, the the call sign I like to call it of the designer mm -hmm. is just so cute because it's sweet and it's cute and anyway. So yeah, I just yeah. that just kind of makes me giggle every time I see that because I was like, really iced animal crackers? And she's like, oh yeah, this is gonna be a big one. And I stand. Yeah. It has been a huge. I was surprised too. Like I just I was like, oh, I think it's cute, but I wasn't like, yeah, people are gonna love it. And then people it, like. People, I posted on Instagram. They were like, "Where is this?" And I was like, "Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> thank you. Yay!" <laughs> so, so I mentioned the crowns. I've mentioned now the animal crackers. I was kind of trying to just Lauren. Believe it or not, Lauren's not in the store today. She got a very well needed and deserved uh, day off oh, wow. because she worked yep. all last weekend. But I didn't mm -hmm. have her to lean on and say, "What? What are the best sellers? What are the so?" So I'm going to ask you. So, do you know, sort of anecdotally or even for real, what your kind of couple best sellers are of the the line yeah so kind of vaguely especially like with market spring market um you know you obviously get a read on like what's selling what's not um mm -hmm. I feel like animal crackers definitely a lot of the pool floaty ones yes um yeah so those do well yeah the flamingo um and then what else Oh, the books a lot of the books um were flying off which was really cool oh, I, I love reading so that's the other nice. one I grabbed. And so um, mm -hmm. I wanted you to kind of talk about this. So we had not seen anyone do this when we saw your design. So basically what you've done, and I think it's pretty clever, is to not rip off any like actual book covers. You're just mm -hmm. kind of giving almost like a genre, but yeah. also is meaningful. So can you tell tell us how this kind of came about? Sure. That was actually the first one that I did. Um, so okay. my oldest brother was getting married. This is two years ago now. Um, and so I was like, what's something wedding? And I know there's a beautiful wedding cake out there, but I just wanted, I don't know, like something wedding that didn't scream like, you know, bride or whatever. So um, I love reading, love books. Don't know why I thought of a book, but I guess stories and like starting your story together as a couple. So I really did that one and then you can do um, like the date underneath our yep. story begins. Yeah. So when you get married and um, yeah, so that one was the first one um, it's cute. and, and it, eventually I'll stitch it. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, um, did you come up with the chart too? Cause it's yeah. cute the way the numbers are, they're a little offset so that yeah. like, they, mm -hmm. they kind of buff around a little bit on the cover. So I, I've been remiss if, if you are listening to this on the uh audio version um the I'll just go back for just a second because I forgot to say so the iced animal crackers is like the the pink and white iced animal crackers with the sprinkles um the floaty the flamingo that she's talking about is really this very cool like 
The perspective of the pool water is what really attracted me to this design is the way that you kind of got the like ripple effect in the sun of the water. Love mm -hmm. that. And then this last one that I'm showing, it says our story begins and it's just a little book and it's got a couple of rings. Uh, so it, it intended to be for a marriage or a wedding. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks like a book. It's, it's one dimensional or excuse me. Yeah. It's it's flat, it's but it's pretty flat. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. Uh, it doesn't um, turn into like a a, a book, a, yes. like a three D book is what I was trying to yeah explain from gotcha. a canvas perspective. Yeah, but then so you did a few others, and and I couldn't put my finger on them here in the store. But the other one that's one of my favorites is um does it say fairy tales or it's got the it's got the princess yeah. castle on it? Yeah, book of fairy tales. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. And then um I can't remember. Is there a couple others that I'm forgetting? Yeah, there's, so Winnie the Pooh is the only one that actually says like Winnie the Pooh on it. And that's because uh -huh. Winnie the Pooh is now in public domain. Um, so there's a couple others also coming up for fall market that are also in public domain. Um, so most of the time, as you said, though, I kind of keep it like genre. Um, so there's one for oh, there's Agatha the crime. Christie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she's known as like the queen of crime, Agatha Christie. So I did, um, you know, a book cover with a cup of tea because it's very British of them and then um like a skull coming out of the top of it so that's right. again just kind of mystery -y. it's not based off of like any specific color cover or book of hers you know mm -hmm. I love that I like that that's general like that so that mm -hmm. because a lot of people are kind of like my daughter is very um and maybe this is a book idea my daughter is very um wizardy uh underworld I don't know what what that genre is called right now fantasy I guess genre yeah um mm -hmm. and so she's not like a one hit wonder like just Harry Potter but she likes all of those sort of so it's it's I think when people kind of resonate with a series of books like that or a genre I think that's really smart so I think those are fun um what is your favorite thing that you've designed so we know the best seller is the animal crackers um but what, yeah. what's your favorite that's a good question. Um, I do love the animal crackers just because designing it was very nostalgic and then stitching it was really fun. I like love beads and extra doodads and things, as you guys say. Um, oh, yeah. Books was definitely really fun. Pool was just kind of random one afternoon. We were at the pool and I was like, oh, this could be cute. And I played around with it for a while. Um, I don't know if there's one that like sticks out. Well, I do love the uh, the spooky sweet club with um, flying needles. Those ghosts were kind of, I love Halloween. So that was a very like, yes, cute and moment so for me. I was, that was going to be the next uh, sort of design um, uh, group of designs of yours that I was going to mention, which is those, what are we calling them? Like ghosts doing things, ghosts doing spooky yeah, things. Yeah, <laughs> ghosts on outings. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yesterday, I only caught a bit of it, but yesterday, Meredith from uh, Flying Needles and Lauren, obviously from Games to Tree, were together on a live on Instagram, and they were kind of going through her first look at the Spooky series and how she just went crazy for them. And so Flying Needles and Bel Air, Bel Air, Florida, yeah, that's right, uh, yeah. has yep. has the started the did the club, so they had the exclusive rights yeah. to the club for a series period of time, um, which I know is still available okay. through them. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yes. was, I think mm -hmm. that's what she mentioned yesterday, but just, was it yesterday or I can't remember. Yeah. I guess it you was had yesterday. a lot going on yesterday. Yeah. 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 It's but okay. It, it's okay. <laughs> yes. But I think it was just yesterday when they, now they are, you can purchase individuals of the campuses, yeah. correct? And mm -hmm. I think they're going to be available individually also at market for other stores, right? Is the exclusive agreement up? Do you know? That's a good question. It's still only to my knowledge, um, available through Meredith at flying needles, um, individually kitted club, you know, those three options. Um, I'm not sure about fall market, but we do have one that's like separate from the series that is coming out for fall market. Love so it's it. a ghost doing something, but it, it's like kind of, within the same I made a ton when she was like oh I love this and I was like cool me too here's more and so she was like okay I think we can only do five and I was like totally get it yeah but Lauren can I do these and Lauren's yeah. like yeah we'll just put them in fall market so absolutely like, cool. so just to kind of um tease that out a little bit so there are these little ghosts mm -hmm. um and you've got them decorating the front of a house they are uh, uh carving counting their candy carving pumpkins yep. uh I think they're trying on costumes am I yes not yep. trying on costumes <laughs> yeah no 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 <laughs> I know Sometimes... right and then 
there's one that they're picking pumpkins. So that's like the whole series. In the pumpkin patch. Very cute. Sometimes yeah. I can't remember what is actually available out on the market and what I've seen. Yeah. We're going to be there. So I'm hoping I'm not ruining any surprises. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> but yes. So, so that series was very, is very cute. Is there, um, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of collect your work is pretty whimsical. I think. And maybe mm -hmm. that is sort of part of your illustration background. Do you feel like? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I was um, more like, so you don't have to niche down further than your major. So illustration is enough in mass arts, like, you know, parameters, but mm -hmm. most of us kind of had our area. So some people are like editorial who would like do illustrations for New York times and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I was very children's book illustration oriented. So it's funny that um, whimsical is such an adjective used because that's very, you know, I think of children's books when I hear that. So it's going into needlepoint without me consciously realizing that's where it's coming from, but that's kind of the, the background of it. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty funny. And it also, um, particularly the spooky series, and I'm trying to think if I know of anything else that's coming, it really tells a story, which is, I guess, mm -hmm. what illustration is to do, right? Like there's words right. and you're telling mm -hmm. the story with, the, with the pictorial view of the story and so you really have done that with that spooky series and um I I is there any other storytelling type canvases coming not for fall well, kind of it's okay. another Halloween thing but it's okay it's different it's not ghosts and if I recall, this is the one where we're actually sort of going to do sort of a joint marketing effort with another designer is that right yes yeah. Yeah, I'm very mm -hmm. excited about that. And I think that's what has also been um, sort of a a hallmark of the Gingham Stitchery is that we want to be collaborative. We want to be store oriented. We want to be um, industry forward. So we do only sell to um, brick and mortar uh, stores. And and I should also add, I, I believe that we're also s selling to um, significant online sellers. So, so basically... Yeah. Ecom and brick and mortar, as long as it's like a, a, a store, like a real, um, yeah, no, I guess yep. business presence, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I feel good about that from the game of century perspective. And I guess, um, another thing I'd love to hear from your perspective is your first market was just this past market. Am I right about that? Uh, which mm -hmm. would have been yeah. in the spring in <laughs> where were we? Were we in Charlotte? Mark? March in Charlotte. Yeah. Okay. And so um, when we were there, so you and I think three others of the artists. It was um, Chrissy Johnson and yes. then Abby from Squirrel on the Snail. And you. And then and Lauren. So, and so that was your first time being at a market. So tell me how that experience went and like, what did you learn from it or how yeah. was it? It was amazing. So I kind of vaguely knew what to expect. Lauren obviously chatted with us and kind of explained the whole deal. Um, and then my mom, obviously being a needle pointer for a long time, watching everybody's Instagrams and that kind of thing. She, she knows what market is and like, you know, would be like, oh, they do this and they come back and everybody shows everything they got at market. So, cause you know, I, I was following people on Instagram, but I wasn't like, I don't know, part of a cycle where it was like, a big presence, I guess. I right. so it I knew vaguely what to expect, but being there was so cool. And it was really fun to meet everybody because that was the first time I met you and Lauren in person. Mm -hmm. Um, which is just crazy to think about because we'd right. been chatting for months before then. So right. Right. um so that was just really exciting just like personally to see you guys and hug everybody and like Chrissy and Abby were amazing and we just had basically a party room and listened to Taylor Swift and it was my heaven. But um, <laughs> yeah, so it was just really fun. And it was so cool to meet everybody um, like Rachel Berry and like just Lucy at Mopsy. It was just so cool to see everybody in one place that you yeah. see online. And it's also wild that everybody's in like totally different areas of the country and yeah. everyone gets together. And then after everybody has a drink or dinner or whatever together, and it's so like beautiful that you're all in business and you're all like having the same end goal like selling things buying things etc mm -hmm. um but it's so much more personal than that it just it was so lovely it was like such a cool energy and 
I, it was, I was totally geeking out. It was so much fun. Yeah, so well, great. Good. And did you feel like you had the opportunity co- to connect with shop owners and like maybe bounce ideas oh, yeah. off of one another? Or did you get any, um, I think it's so interesting um, when artists, and I, I know that you are this way because here's the gang of Stitchery, we don't uh, have a lack of opinions and advice. <laughs> <laughs> and our Which I, artists, love. I, need that. I was gonna say our artists are very um open to ideas and so it works for us um but did you did you kind of hear things or hear themes or did people like did you gather anything from market from other shop owners definitely and, good yeah absolutely so um that was also the first time I met Meredith who at that point already had the club going mm-hmm. um so that was really cool to talk about it and see like the stitched ones as examples um but yeah it was definitely cool again to um like see people you see on the internet in person so when they would come in I was trying not to be like hi oh my god I know you and yeah oh yeah like they might not know who I am <laughs> which is totally fine but I, instead of being like hello person like naming yeah. them I'd be like hi yes. and nice to meet you <laughs> yes so exactly. I had to kind of rein it in because you feel like you you know them you know like you watch them all the, like with you and Lauren I felt to some degree I already knew you guys because mm-hmm. I watched all the lives and everything obviously at that point you guys hadn't known me but here we are so it's cool that's right uh, but yeah definitely very lots of brainstorming lots of like oh this would be cool in our shop but if you change the color or add this or do a different icon which is all totally doable mm-hmm. um so yeah it was very good brainstorming session as well absolutely good you know the other design that it just popped into my head is the bananas that's yes. kind of a big one it doesn't it say don't don't go bananas don't go bananas yeah and I think Lauren just showed the other day unless she didn't but I'm going to tell about it is now there's the insert the little banana insert for yeah the, the clutches yeah for so, um the hot pink Rachel Berry is kind of my vision so oh my gosh, yeah that but that's something so I say at, at work all the time with my students I'm like let's not go bananas like yeah don't go crazy <laughs> take a deep breath so speaking yeah. of that so you do teach at your uh alma mater your high school yes um mm-hmm. and is it what's the what does the school look like is it is it private is it yeah public? sure is it get yep, boys, so girls? it's private catholic um boys girls private catholic and um it's funny so my mom works at like one of the feeder schools so she's like elementary private catholic school and most of the kids from there go to my high school so they go from mrs sweet to miss sweet so sometimes the <laughs> transition is so i'm like okay i get it like some of them get a pass but then some of them are like oh you're mrs sweet i'm like no no not yet <laughs> miss sweet. yeah yeah right i know i have to distinguish because we are two different humans too um correct but yeah so i work there it's very different from when i went to high school because they've added two or three new buildings mm-hmm. um so it's definitely like there's, you know, the older half that that's where my locker was, that's where my homeroom was kind of thing. Um, but there's a good amount of teachers who have, you know, changed over. So there's um, like some people who were my teachers and then um, a lot of newer people only because COVID, a lot of people retired, understandably, because mm-hmm. um, it was just so much. You had to change the entire way you were teaching. And if For you've sure. been teaching for years, it made sense that, you know, if that's your time, that's totally okay. Yep. Um, so there was a lot of changeover and then the buildings are all new um, on like one half of the campus. Um, so it's still familiar, but definitely enough going on that it's like, oh, this is new, this is cool. Never been in here, like, oh, So um, yeah, so it's definitely, it feels familiar in a lot of ways, but it's also just a different chapter of life. You know, in my twenties, it's a lot different than being a high school student. (laughs) So do your students know that you have this side hustle that you're painting? Some do. Yeah, some do. Cause, um, with art, especially like, it's just a lot more opportunity to chat and talk because they're painting, they're drawing, they're working. Mm -hmm. Um, so in a lot of ways, I just get to know them like on a deeper level. Um, just because, you know, I'm not lecturing, um, She's not the format. So a lot of them who I've known, again, like my mom teaches at the elementary school. So some of these kids, like I've kind of known for a really long time, like a good portion of their life. Yeah. So they feel pretty comfortable being like, oh, so like, you know, what else do you do? Or like, where, where are you going this weekend? Like just totally normal questions, of course. But um, yeah, so some of them really are like, this is so cool. Like, 
can I look at your Instagram? They won't follow me, but like they can, I'll let them look at it. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> I'm like, once you graduate, I don't care. But when we're yeah. like teacher student, not yet, but um, keep, they, yeah. they do ask and they, they definitely, a lot of them are, who are more like, I want to eventually be an artist as a job. They really have like those kind of like, how did you get started? what did you do? And how was college? Do you think it was necessary to go to art school and all those normal questions. So um, yeah, so some kids care, some of them don't, and that's okay. That's so. okay. I'm wondering though, as I'm sitting here, if there's opportunity for um, needle crafts in an art curriculum, whether it's in high school or grade school or, because that's just never really been a thing. Right, a thing. Yeah. So my mom tries a lot, especially with fine motor, because um, that's uh -huh. a big part of elementary art is like mm -hmm. hand strength and building that up. So you can like use scissors and hold the pencil correctly. Um, definitely a little bit less. That's why I like high school because I don't have to do like they can wash a paintbrush and yeah. it's, <laughs> they got it. Like, so she definitely has a lot more patience than I do, but um, she, she does a lot of sewing. She'll do weaving, kind of like oh. paper weaving and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I'm definitely trying to look um, for like moments, like maybe a club or something to kind of do more fibery needle art stuff. So yeah, there's definitely a, a chance um, to do that. It's just been so much in the last four years. So I haven't gotten oh, that. Oh, yeah, yet. for sure. And, you know, I have a little bit of a different perspective because my kids are in public school setting. And so mm -hmm. there isn't as much art and music, er, the arts enrichment as I would right. love because it's, there's just not time for it. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, it's just kind of me hearing you talk about young people and art. It's just kind of making me think, why don't we work a little harder to get those yeah, our fiber arts out into the world. So, um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Not, and even like, self serving at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's so, it's so good for mental health. I know that's why so many people are drawn to it. Like, mm -hmm. that's just a big, you know, pull for people is like, I need a hobby and I need one that I can put down with if the kids are running around or I need one to pick up if I'm at the beach or, yep. you know, it's so portable and easy to, to carry around. So, it's, it's really a great, Kind of practice and method for people too. You're right. It's way yeah. I didn't, hadn't thought about that because it's not like you can necessarily bring like your acrylic paints to the beach. You know, I mean, you can. Yeah, no. it's a little. It's you know, you've got to have a lot of supplies for that, or even watercolor is right. a little harder to to you know do on the run for sure. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good, mm -hmm. good point. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've forgotten to ask you about. I mean, I think we've talked about your process and your a little bit about your personal life as a teacher. Uh, you and your family, are you? most of your family is around where you are, so you probably have a chance to see your family. I know that you're, uh, you and your sister collaborate a little bit on designs, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mom also sometimes will be like, oh, make it pink. And so I'm like, cool. But yeah, definitely Tegan's um, a springboard. Tegan helps kind of, you know, rework stuff if I'm stuck on something. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, a family effort for sure. So do you think that her uh, science brain is helps or, or yeah, you know, just gives you a I different perspective a little bit? Definitely. Yes. I, there are certain times where I get very like art school in the sense that like, I'm making this for me, but obviously I'm not, I'm making it for mass market, multiple right. people. So sometimes I get too niche down and she's like no one will get that and I'm like you're very right so I'll have to kind of <laughs> tweak it or anything 3D my brain cannot I'm not a sculptor I'm not a like three-dimensional person um so anything 3D she'll like do all the math and schematics and stuff and I'm like thank god because I there's I wouldn't even know where to begin with that so I love it now if I remember your sister's on the west coast though right she, she just moved. Yeah. So everybody thought, else I, is East coast. And yeah, she, yeah, she was at heirloom designs with you guys. Yeah. I saw her there. Yes. And I was remembering that the two of you were in different parts of the country. So it's nice that you also mm -hmm. have that to bring each other, you know, together, have a form of communication. Um, yeah, and definitely. so mm -hmm. her, one of her local shops is heirloom. What local shops do you have there near where, where do you, you and your mom go? Yeah, there's a couple. Um, so there's two on Cape Cod. Um, so okay. my boyfriend is from the Cape. So if we go out there, um, see his parents and that kind of thing, we'll stop in there, either of those stores. And then there's a couple um, like Connecticut um, that we can take a pilgrimage to, um, like Thistle Needleworks. <laughs> um, 
and Penny Lynn also has like her showroom. I know it's not like a storefront, but um, yeah, so there's definitely a couple in New England area, um, but yeah, it's definitely kind of, we make a drive out of it, which is great. Like it's a fun time. It's a nice trip. So for sure. And what do the brothers think about this whole, all the sisters and mom and, and dad, I don't know if dad's around, but like, what do the, what do yeah. the guys think? They have all gotten some sort of needlepoint something. Um, the guys are getting belts. Um, one of my brothers has two belts that are needlepoint, but not by mom. He just like bought them and thought they were really cool. Mom's like, okay, I'm working on it. Like I can't <laughs> itch as fast as you want the belts. Um, so they've also, again, grown up around it. So it's very second nature to them that like somebody's stitching. It's just mm -hmm. now multiple people stitching at the same time. So um, they just have more people to ask for things from. So That's true. Now, have you gotten your boyfriend, I guess, into stitching at all? He will try. He, he <laughs> definitely, like, if I have something bigger, um, 13 mesh, he can do it because he's a big dude. So his hands can't do all the little right. things. Not to say that people can't, but he just doesn't have the patience for it. So sure. he'll do it occasionally, but not... He loves looking at things. He loves seeing pillows finish. He just thinks they're really pretty and cool. Uh -huh. um, but he he doesn't, I don't think he'll ever take it up. Um, yeah, but I've, he appreciates it. Same here. I've tried to get my husband and my son actually will stitch a little bit, but my husband's like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, not my thing. Uh, and my daughter yeah. stitches too, but it's it's just kind of funny that it doesn't necessarily have to be a gender specific hobby, but it just kind of right to do that for whatever reason um but yeah, so I always yeah. have to ask if the guys of the family are are doing any stitching because we'd like to encourage that <laughs> I do yeah I when I first started I because I knit too and so I knit first for a long time and then um transitioned more to stitching and he tried knitting so that was exciting but with stitching he was like it's just a little I can't it's like <laughs> okay there's bigger canvases we can work on it so. I love it so what are you stitching right now? Or have you, do you have any, uh, prize yeah, I don't, possessions? I don't have it with me right now, but I'm doing, so I like to have a 13 mesh project and an 18 mesh project. I know obviously that's pretty standard just because 18, I can throw in the bag and 13, I kind of have my stand and everything. Gotcha. Um, so I'm doing the, I think it's called flower power by Mopsy, um, oh, yeah. designs. And it's so beautiful and rainbow and fun. And I'm going to finish it as a pillow with a ruffle and I'm, so excited. Um, and then my 18 mesh project is Princess Pumpkins by Allison Blue. Um, oh, so it's a little stack of pumpkins. Really cute. And then I saw somebody did like a gingham background. Um, oh. And so I did a gingham background on mine because it felt very appropriate. So. Yeah, no kidding. Appreciate that. Do you remember yeah. what your first project was, your stitching project? Oh, that is a good question. Um, I don't know if I remember I'm definitely the kind of person who starts things too frequently <laughs> so I kind of start a whole bunch and then some just stay for years untouched <laughs> so. you know I'm also one of those people that I find for some reason so much more joy in starting than finishing yeah. and you would think that the finishing would be like so exciting but I just think it's so much more fun to pick the colors and the stitches and get it all set up and then yeah I agree in the perfect <laughs> needle minder and do all the things and then let it sit there for a little while <laughs> yep I'm right there with you <laughs> yep I get it well Maddie this has been really fun is there anything that I haven't asked you about or you'd like to share about yourself that we have overlooked I don't think so. I think okay. that was that was very thorough. I think we did great. Yeah, <laughs> I think we did pretty good too. If I, if I can say so. Yeah. Myself. I am very excited to see. Um, and you will be at market again. I think this yes. fall. So exciting! Yes, awesome. in Frisco. Mm -hmm. And you've got, from what I can tell, at least a handful of new things. I don't know exactly how many, but I think it's sixteen, seventeen, somewhere around there. Maybe fifteen. Wow. There's some duplicate things. Um, you know, so not like a new print necessarily, but a new size or a new gotcha. configuration. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, um, I am delighted to have you as part of our team and I'm excited to see what is to come. And, uh, the things I have seen, I will tell my fellow shop owners, come check us out at fall market because Maddie, there's some really cute things. As you already know, her reputation precedes her. It's so fun and charming and whimsical and there's more to come. So we're super Thank excited you. and, uh, and look forward to see what you have what you have in store for yourself and for us, Maddie. So thank you. Yeah. And, thank you. Uh, I mean, it's 
been incredible to work with you guys. It's so much fun. I love, 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 love every aspect of this community and working with you guys. It's just been an absolute dream. So I love every part of it. Well, good. I thank you. We, we want to, this is supposed to be fun. It is after all a hobby, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, all right, girl. Well, thanks for taking time to talk to me. And um, I will definitely see you in person. Not, but believe it or not, market is, let's see, are we like three or four weeks away? It's not far. <laughs> it's oh coming. my goodness. I know. I'm just thinking about the start of school and that's kind of where my dreams and nightmares have been. So. Same, same. One step at a time. Get the kids back. Right. At school, yeah. the teachers back at school and then we'll talk about our fall market. So. Anyway, yeah. well, enjoy those last few uh, days, I, I'm assuming, of summer uh, yeah. and until you get thank back you. in the classroom. So, all right, Maddie. Well, thanks so much. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Thank Bye. You.